Ned Stokely's son? Yeah. All the way from St. Louis, huh? That's right. No. Down on the end. What's wrong with him? Nothing I could cure. A couple months back, he got word about his wife, your ma, dying. <laughs> he just quit wanting to live. It happens in a place like this. Me, Rich. Right here, Pop. Let's see. And I know you come. Grown man now, ain't you? That's right, Pop.
Evening, Mr. Jarrett. Good evening, Silas. Jared, you're late. And starved. We'll have dinner whenever it's ready. Yes, Mrs. Buck. Well, how are things in town? Oh, very dull and uninteresting. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should all move to San Francisco. Oh? From your daughter. You have time for a sherry if you'd like. Oh, good. Thing till the end of the month, too many things to do, love, order. Well, now, isn't that newsy and full of information? But San Francisco is a difficult place to leave. Uh, who's winning? The Lady Luck, which happens to be on Nick's side tonight. Oh? Well, I uh, may just make plans to change that right after dinner. And I may just give you the chance. Well, Jared, it seems you have plans to change a lot of things. Uh, what's that? Otis Clark of the Stockton Bank, Chair's Committee to nominate Jared Barkley for Attorney General. Now, where did they get that terrible picture? I gave it to him. After all, he's your campaign manager. Co-campaign manager. A co-campaign manager. So things in town are dull and uninteresting, hmm? Well, now, there's nothing really to get excited about yet. Are you pleased? Of course I am. But why didn't you tell me? Well, he didn't know about it until today. That is, that it was definite. Uh, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. I haven't accepted anything yet. But you will, of course. Jenny is served, Mrs. Barkley. Thank you. Ah, uh, I refuse to make any major decisions on an empty stomach, shall we? Oh, listen to that. Typical politician. No definite answers. Keep them in suspense. <laughs> Hold up the interest. Well, you just better accept, my boy. Fred. Evening, Otis. Closing up. Oh, in a minute. Got some things to put away first. You uh, going to that committee meeting tonight? Yeah, after I finish making my rounds and having my supper. Well, why don't you go over to the hotel? We'll have supper and go together. In about ten minutes. Fine. Ten minutes it is. you got here. Mm-hmm. Must have kept you nice and comfortable for a long time. Who are you? What do you want? Take a good look. Maybe I'll remind you of somebody. Well, I never saw you before. I don't know what you're talking about. You wouldn't care, even if you did. Look, if, if it's money you want... Well, now, if you've got some you don't want, I might as well take it. Before. Before what? Where's the money? Figured it out yet? But who I remind you of. I told you. I don't know what you're talking about. Get out! Think. What about state prison? State? My name's Stokely. Rich. Stokely. State prison. Stokely. Yeah. Now 
you remember. That's good. Because you're going to die thinking about it. New money, brand new. The serial numbers checked with the list the Treasury Department sent me. It's a lucky break. Yeah, I'm going to telegraph this list to every law enforcement office in the state. Let's hope he starts spending it soon. Yeah, I guess Otis's wife does too. By the way, she's inside waiting. She said she'd been looking for you. How's she taking it? Oh, about as well as can be expected. Consider. Office earlier. Well, I'm sorry, Sarah. I spent most of the morning at the courthouse. When you go there again, won't you? I, I mean, when that. I mean, when that man who killed Otis is caught and brought to trial. Sarah, you realize that I'm not the prosecuting attorney. Otis always had such respect for you, Jared. He watched your career so closely, and he was so proud of you. I've heard him say, you wait, Sarah, you, you wait until Jared's the Attorney General. He'll do right. He'll be good for everybody. You will do right for Otis, won't you, Jared? Sarah, whether or not I'm the Attorney General doesn't really matter. The only thing that does matter is that justice be done. I'll see to that. Don't you worry. I believe you, Jared. I leave it in your hands. Listen, I'm going to meet Nick in a few minutes. Why don't you come with me and come on out to the ranch and visit for a few days? No. No, thank you. I'm all right now. Mr. Barkley here. Which one of the Barkleys? A lawyer. Jared. No, he isn't, but he's expected. Mr. Heath is here. How about Mrs. Barkley? She's out visiting. Well, I'll just wait. Stokely. Howdy. It's a pleasure. A real pleasure. You're Rich Stokely? Yes, sir. I sure am. How'd he get in here? Knocked on the door. Just like that, eh? Just like that. You realize you're wanted for murder? Yes, sir. I sure do. 
That's why I came here. I want to see you. I figure I'm going to need a lawyer. A good one. And I hear... you're the best. Listen to him, Jared. He's got quite a story to tell. All right, start talking. Well... It's about all them wanted posters saying that I killed that Stockton banker man. Didn't you? Mister, I couldn't have. I wasn't anywhere near Stockton when it happened. Stokely, people saw you. The sheriff, for one. And the dead man identified you by name before he died. That's what I can't figure out. It had to be somebody else. I was over to Jackson, working there. You ask them. They'll tell you. Who'll tell us? Fella I was working for over there, rancher by the name of uh, Bickers, Jason Bickers, and uh, some some of the other ranch hands I was working with. Are you sure about that? Ain't no reason not to be. Look, I figure maybe it was somebody who had it in for me. No, use my name. Well, I I don't know. I. But, you know, when I saw all them wanted posters, $5,000, dead or alive? Well, I, I hightailed it over here as fast as I could to see you, because I was afraid someone would put a bullet in me. How do we know he's telling the truth? But I am. You've got to believe me. We don't got to believe anything. If you're innocent, that has to be proved. You can do that. Uh -huh. Just on what I told you. That remains to be seen. In the meantime, I think I'd like to have the Stockton Sheriff take a good look at you. Sheriff? <laughs> Boy, he'll throw me in jail, won't he? Probably. No. Is, is that what you want me to do? Right at the moment, Stokely, I don't see that you have any choice. The man I got locked up in that cell. It's the same man who came running out of the bank. I don't care if he's got a hundred witnesses. Fred, you're absolutely sure. Good Lord, man, he took a shot at me. Of course I'm sure. I'd swear to it. Well, when we get to court, I'm afraid you'll have to. The least bit surprised Fred doesn't understand you. Who does? Nick, the man couldn't have been in two places at the same time. I don't, don't deny that. The jury will decide. But why do you have to defend him? There are other lawyers, you know. Because I believe there's a reasonable doubt. Oh, well, you're going to go a long, long way to prove that. I'll tell you one thing there's no doubt about. You're playing with political dynamite. I have anything to do with politics. You are running for attorney general... I'm not running yet. As a matter of fact, I haven't even been nominated. You go on defending Stokely, and chances are you won't be. Jared, Otis Clark was a well-known, well-liked man in this town. I know that. And public sentiment is not exactly on the side of Stokely. Nick, a murder trial doesn't have anything to do with sentiment. Only facts do. I think there are a few facts you've overlooked. Such as? Reality. A man wanting a high political position does not expose himself to the possibility of being ridiculed by the public. The voting public. Nick, are you really suggesting that I should overlook the fact that a man's life is at stake for some kind of political imagery? No, no, wait a minute, wait a minute, Jared. All I'm trying to do is to point out the plain, simple facts. A man in your position should drop this case. I can't. Why not? Because I'm the first lawyer he came to. Nick, if he'd gone to a lawyer who was running for the presidency of the United States, that man would have the same responsibility. And if that man didn't take the case, I wouldn't vote for him. All right, we can proceed. Now, Sheriff, on the night Otis Clark was murdered and the Stockton Bank robbed, you were in the hotel at that time, is that correct? That's correct. Tell the court what happened. 
Well, I was waiting for Otis, Mr. Clark. We were going to have dinner together before the meeting. Well, I heard what sounded like a shot from way off. I ran outside and saw this fellow running from the bank. I yelled at him to stop. He took a shot at me and creased me right here. But when I got my senses back, he was gone. So I ran over to the bank, found Mr. Clark on the floor. He'd been shot. He died a few seconds later. Did he say anything to you before he died? He did. He said Stokely. Rich Stokely. Now, Sheriff, the man you saw run out of the bank, the man who also took a shot at you, is he in this courtroom? He is. Will you point him out to us and give us his name, please? That's him. Rich Stokely. Now, Sheriff, have you ever seen the defendant, Rich Stokely, before? No. And yet you feel that you got a good enough look at him the night you say he ran out of the Stockton Bank to put out this wanted poster on him and to identify him here in this court. Is that correct? Yes. I told you that before, Jared. Sheriff, isn't there any possibility that you could be wrong? No. I see. Sheriff, how would you describe a man of medium height? 5'9 to 5'10. Mm-hmm. What about 5'11? Well, there's little difference. Granted. What about six feet? Well, that I'd have to call tall. You would? What are you driving at, Jared? Would you please stand up, Mr. Stokely? Now, Sheriff, in your testimony, you described the man you saw that night as being of medium height. Isn't that correct? Yes. How tall are you, Mr. Stokely? A little over 6'1". <laughs> now, Sheriff, I have here in my hand a copy of the voter registration list from the last general election in the city of San Francisco. City of considerable size, wouldn't you say? Yes. Well, let's look here under S. Or to be more exact, under S-T-O. What do you see? Stokely. How many? How about 20? Including a Richard F. Stokely and a Richard S. Stokely. Isn't that correct? Yes. Uh, not that either of these gentlemen could be the defendant, but isn't it true, uh, Sheriff, that men named Richard are often referred to as rich? I suppose. Well, if we have two rich Stokelys right up in the city of San Francisco, how many rich Stokelys do you think we have in the state of California, or in the entire country, for that matter? Now, Sheriff, isn't it entirely possible, as my client testified earlier, that it could have been someone using his name for what purpose we do not know, or that it was another Rich Stokely altogether? That's him. That's the man who killed Otis Clark. I saw him. Mr. Bickers, you're a rancher in Jackson, California, isn't that correct? I run about 5,000 head. And aren't you also on the board of directors of the Cattleman's Bank in Jackson? I am. And as such, did you have occasion to do business with the Bank of Stockton, in particular Otis Clark? Many times. Otis and I were good friends. Where were you on the night Mr. Clark was killed? I was in night camp. We were out after some strays. Then I take it you had ranch hands with you? Oh, yes. Mr. Bickers, is any one of the men who was with you that night in this courtroom right now? Yes. Young fellow who signed on a few days before. That's him there. Rich Stokely. <laughs> Well, 
Well, if it ain't Harry Banner, what are you doing in these parts? Oh, looking at some breed stock down the valley a ways. How you been, Charlie? Fine, fine. How are things up in Stockton these days? Just like they are here, I guess. At least when I left. Uh, give us a whiskey. Sure thing. Sweetheart. How about bringing another bottle? That's what I'm here for. You're called, mister. You're gonna play poker or drink? Buddy, I can do both. That's for the bottle, and that's for you. You just stick around till I get through playing here. I'm not going anywhere. Should the evidence point equally to the guilt and innocence of the defendant, it is your sworn duty to take that view of the evidence that points to his innocence. Now, the law clearly prescribes, gentlemen, that where there is a reasonable doubt, and I wish to repeat that, a reasonable doubt, the defendant must be acquitted. And I feel that you gentlemen agree with me that we have far more than a reasonable doubt existing here today. Thank you. Will the defendant please rise? Have you reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. We find the defendant, Rich Stokely, not guilty. Thanks. No! He did it! He killed my husband! You lied. You said justice would be done. You're letting that killer go. He promised me. Your son promised me. What kind of a man are you? Liar. There, please. You call this justice? <laughs> my husband is dead at his hand. And your son is setting him free. My husband is dead. Do you hear me? My husband is dead. He's dead. for your horse and gear down at the livery stable. Thanks, sir. Wire for you. Sheriff Dolan, Modesto. I reckon you better read it. All right, thanks, Bert. Well, listen to this, Yard. Arriving afternoon stage with suspect answering to name of Stokely. Apprehended in possession of bills matching serial numbers from Stockton Bank robbery request you identify. Let me see that, Fred. Stokely, appears I owe you an apology. I don't see why. You did what you believed to be right, same as Mr. Barkley here. Well, I guess that'll clear up a lot of things. Yes, I guess it will. 
Why don't you stick around a while and get a look at this fellow who caused you all this trouble? No. No, I, I ought to be moving on. I still got my job up to Jackson. There's a lot of work waiting for me there. Well, that goes for me, too. We got about 500 head of cattle that are a week overdue for Roundup. Nick and the boys are going out to get them, and I think I'll just go along. You? Why not? A little fresh air, chuck wagon food, be just like a vacation. <laughs> I guess it would have done. Your campaign coming up, you might not get another chance for a while. That's exactly what I was thinking of. I guess you both better get going. Well, sorry, Stokely. Forget it. Thanks, Mr. Barclay. Good luck, Rich. I'll see you in about a week. You know, I always figured you'd make a fine attorney general, Jared. I'm sure of it. Just put all that in the form of a vote, will you, Fred? <laughs> yeah. for a little celebration, wouldn't you say, Heath? I reckon so. Well, for a little while there, I thought there was some doubt. But a shadow of a doubt. You said so yourself. Which has now been removed. I think that's enough joking about it. Let's forget it. Forget it on the contrary. I'm here to remind one and all that Jared did hold on to his convictions and in the face of determined opposition. And I might add from some members of his own family. Now, what kind of a man would do that? What kind of a man is standing before you now? A man who should be occupying the office of Attorney General. Here, here. <laughs> Speaking of occupying, we have a couple of saddles waiting for us. Oh, you're coming with us, Brother Jared. You bet I am, but I just want to close out the file on the Stokely case first, so I'll meet you in the morning. Uh, we'll be in the North Pasture in case you need anything. Oh, by the way, uh, while you're not doing anything, you might give some thought to that speech you're going to make in front of the nominating committee. That's in two weeks. It's an acceptance speech. I'm very proud of you. Thank you, Mother. Oh, how much further we got to ride? A couple more hours. <laughs> sure a waste of time. You've said that. And oh, and I'll say it again. I didn't rob no bank. And I didn't kill no banker. I was over to Jackson when, when all that happened. Working the ranch over there. And how'd you get that money? Oh. That's just a coincidence. Like everything else. Money changes hands, you know. <laughs> I could have gotten it any place. Well, that finishes the Stokely case. Now for a few beautiful days of chasing a bunch of hard-headed steer. It's going to be very good for you. I'll get it. Oh, thank goodness you're here. I was afraid you'd be out in the range. What's the matter, Fred? Harry Banner. He was in Modesto yesterday when Sheriff Dolan arrested that suspect he's bringing in. What about it? Uh, he says if you stood him up beside Rich Stokely, you'd swear they were twins. What? Uh, he saw them both in less than 24 hours, and he thought he was seeing double. And the other man's name is also Stokely? That's right. You mean it's possible that I freed a guilty man this morning? Well, that's what I was figuring. Of course, why not? One here in Stockton, the other in Modesto. While one commits a crime here, the other covers for him someplace else. Well, I'll know for sure when that stage gets here. Could have figured there'd be two of them. Well, of course, we, we don't know for sure. It could be coincidental. Two people with the same name. Don't go yet, Fred. 
Fred, I think we could both use a brandy. Right. Sorry, Fred. I'm afraid I was a little rough on you. Oh, it wasn't as bad as all that. The only thing that really got me was to be told that I didn't see what I really had seen. It kind of shook my confidence in myself. It's done a pretty good job on my confidence, too. I thought his story was airtight. Now, oh, wait a minute. You just did what you had to do. Well, maybe Harry Banner is wrong. No. No, Harry Banner wasn't wrong. When I heard Fred say that Rich Stokely might be a twin, it brought something to mind that happened a long time ago. It happened right here in Stockton. Well, I'd forgotten all about it until Fred said what he did. What are you getting at, Victoria? Well, 20 years ago, I was a witness at a murder trial. These are the records. There was a man, his name was Stokely, and he was part of a gang that tried to rob the old miners' bank. There was a killing. I saw it. So did Otis. Otis? Otis Clark, he worked at the bank at that time. It was our testimony that convicted the man. When they took him from the courtroom, he screamed. He swore that if he ever got out, he'd kill us both. Well, they had, they had given him life, so oh, his threat didn't really worry me. But I never considered his children as, as part of that threat. His children? Two boys, both born on the same day. Well, I got to meet that stage. I take it you'll be around? Yeah, I'll be around. I'll be back when I find out something. Well, I guess there's nothing to do but wait. What time does the Modesto stage get in? Late, about sundown. Charlie? Yeah, I'm all right. Hey, driver! And you in the coat! Throw your guns out! Oh, boy. You better do what he says. Listen to me. I'm a sheriff from Modesto. Sheriff Dolan. I've got a prisoner here. There are no passengers, nothing of value on this coach. He telling the truth, Billy? He sure is, Rich! What is this? Just him and me in here. Hand your gun over to my brother. Brother? That's right. Now, you gonna do like he says, or you gonna let that driver up there get killed? I got a rich. Come on out. Now get me out of these.
what'd you do that for? You were supposed to keep out of sight till you heard from me. How come you weren't spending that money? All I wanted was a couple of drinks. A little fun. I got tired of waiting. You got tired of waiting. How long did Pi have to wait? Come on. Let's finish what we gotta do and clear out of this country. <laughs> Jared, Fred won't be back for some time. Now sit down and relax. I am perfectly relaxed. You're worried, aren't you? Worried? Sure, I'm worried. I'm worried about that nominating committee. Well, they can't condemn you for upholding your convictions. Oh, you think they can't? Those men are politicians. All they care about is winning an election. They were the same way before the trial. You weren't worried then. Well, that was different. Sure. So why don't you say what's on your mind? You're worried about me, aren't you? Of course I am. Well, Jared, I must admit, I, I don't like the idea of one or both of those men probably planning to kill me, but... Um, I'm not going to let it spoil our dinner. Come on, let's eat. They're all out and around. You go that way, I'll go that way. I thought you might like some coffee. I sure would. Thank you. What are you doing? Oh, kind of catching up on my reading. You? Just trying to finish this acceptance speech, just in case I still win that nomination. Well, then I'll let you alone.
Figure maybe he'd like to meet my brother. Billy, come on out here. Take a good look at the woman who killed our pa. So, this is Mrs. Barclay. How did you get in here? Jimmy would opened a back window. There wasn't nobody around to stop us. Hold on now, Billy. We got plenty of time. Just like Pa had. Plenty of time. Are oh, you fools, both of you? If you've come here to get revenge for what happened to your father, you made a big mistake. No, Mrs. Barkley, you made the mistake. Twenty years ago. Your father was a murderer. He got exactly what he deserved. And you put him there to die. You and that banker. That's... That's why we're here. It's what Pa wanted. Have you forgotten what my son Jared did for you? You're a free man. But if you kill me, they'll hang you for sure. I have a hard time proving it with us, Mr. Barker. It doesn't make any difference which one of you does it. They'll get you both for murder. All right, that's enough. You just quiet down and shut up. Barclay. Turn around. I said, turn around. All right? You want it like this. I'm Acceptance speech. Uh huh. Well, I didn't make it. Oh. Well, why not? Well, simple fact is, I uh, I turned the nomination down. Oh. I've been doing a lot of thinking since I had that little talk with Nick about the hard practicalities of politics, all the compromises, the really hard facts that I hadn't thought about. I just decided that I wasn't a politician after all. I'm a lawyer. Well, I'm not disappointed, not really. You know, somehow I didn't think you would be. But as for Nick... <laughs> Nick can be pretty hard-headed at times, but he's also a Barclay. And that's also a fact. <laughs> <laughs> 